there's something not right here. The cave on Dagobah holds a great many mysteries. A domain of evil it is. And you must go. What exactly is it? Where did it come from? Whatever happened to it once Yoda vanished? And how can it possibly be alive? Let's explore the life and death of the Cave of Evil on Dagobah. <coughs> Star Wars is full of mystery, but we're about to bust the cannon wide open on this one. I've been busy researching the answers to all your burning questions surrounding the Dagobah Cave. Did you call for assistance? Starting off with the fact that the Cave of Evil isn't actually a cave, but rather it was a living entity. What? In fact, you can read its thoughts in the short story Virgins, one of 40 short stories collected in The Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view. Written by Tracy Dion, Virgins is written from the perspective of the Cave of Evil. Before we go into the specifics of the cave itself, it might be a good idea to cover off what a Virgins in the Force means in the Star Wars galaxy. A Virgins, you say? No, I'm not talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi. A Virgins, sometimes referred to as a Nexus or a Lotus was an unusual yet naturally occurring concentration of force energy localized around a place, object, or person. What? The Skywalker Saber functioned as a virgins in The Force Awakens. And Qui-Gon believed Anakin was a virgins in The Force. I've encountered a virgins in The Force. Located around a person? A boy. A virgins centered around a location could give nearby force sensitive stronger interactions with the force, often including visions. Locations that could be considered virgences include the Mirror Cave on Akto, the Jedi Temple on Lothal, the Force World of Mortis. Some Sith also believe Exegol housed a virgins in the depths of its chasms. And of course, there was the Wellspring of Life, which Yoda discovered during the final year of the Clone Wars. The cave on Dagobah is one such virgins in the Force, and it refers to itself as such. In this short story by Tracy Dion, the cave describes how it came to be aware of its own existence. Across its incredible lifespan, the cave began joining with the minds of all who entered, and absorbed a small piece of awareness from each. You know what I'm looking for? Something lost. A part of yourself. Perhaps. The cave began operating as a place for force visions and in the beginning would simply project whatever baggage someone who entered the cave was holding onto and that the cave might pick up on when joining minds, like an echo. This could have been a memory, an insecurity, or thought. The cave did this at first by instinct, in an effort to gain further understanding and to become more sophisticated over time. Throughout the many visitations over hundreds of years, the first concept the virgins grasped was time time, followed by thought, memory, and finally, fear. Fear is the path to the dark side. It was fear that the virgins valued most of all. With the knowledge of fear came an appetite. To the cave, fear served as a shortcut to greater understanding. Much like the nature of the dark side, the cave gave into it as a path to greater power. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. The cave found fear to be more sustaining than any other energy the Virgins' visitors could offer. Over generations, stories about the cave spread among Force-sensitive pilgrims who would seek out the Virgins to meditate under its influence. In turn, the cave sought to offer those who entered more and more confronting and frightful lessons through visions in the Force. The cave would feed off the fear and fuel its own existence, catapulting its evolution even further. For example, during the Clone Wars, the cave teased Yoda with a shrouded vision of the Sith Lord who had eluded him throughout the conflict which engulfed the galaxy, Darth Sidious, and showed him the consequences of failing to unmask his true enemy. Join me. There is. When Luke Skywalker entered the cave, he saw a man who he believed killed his father, 
As well as a cryptic clue to his enemy's true identity, the cave served a warning. There are bound to be more experiences just like Luke and Yoda's. We don't know who the first acolyte to enter the cave was, but we do know its final visitor, Ben Solo, who at this point in his life had abandoned the Jedi and taken up the mantle of Kylo Ren, visited the Cave of Evil with his new master Snoke as he continued his study of the dark side of the Force. The mighty Kylo Ren. Sometime around 28 ABY. That's after the Battle of Yavin. Before we continue this Dagobah deep dive, I wanted to invite you to join us here at Star Wars Sublight if you haven't already, by subscribing to the channel, where overanalyzing the galaxy is our speciality. You'd be amazed at what you miss while traveling at light speed, so why not come out of hyperspace to explore the finer details of the galaxy far, far away with us? Because when you sub to Sublight, you join thousands of Star Wars fans just like us, looking to go a little deeper into what makes the galaxy tick. So what are you waiting for? Sub to Sublight today. Just like Luke Skywalker did almost 30 years earlier when he was learning under Master Yoda. What's in there? A domain of evil it is. And you must go. Kylo Ren asked his master Snoke what exactly awaited him inside the Cave of Evil. His master replied with a twisted version of Yoda's lesson to Luke Skywalker. Kind of duplicating the Luke Skywalker role, but you see the echo of where... It all's gonna go. Whereas Yoda told Luke that inside the cave was only what you take with you. Snoke told his apprentice that what lay beyond was only what he'd been too weak to bury. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Kylo Ren enters and is met with a vision of his former master, his parents, of his true family. Knowing the cave of evil could think and feel for its own only makes the next few panels worse. Hoping to feed off the fear of this young acolyte, the cave instead got a taste of Kylo Ren's unbridled rage, which was used to completely obliterate the cave from within. The natural formation was reduced to a crater, supposedly taking the entity that lured travelers with it. I thought you would be the one to snuff it out. Snoke was disappointed that Kylo Ren chose to destroy the Virgins in the Force, which he said had stood for thousands of years. But after feeding off the emotions of its guests for millennia, the cave, and seemingly the entity within, was no more, making Kylo Ren the final pilgrim to receive its lesson. Do you think the Virgins was destroyed along with the cave? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new, sub to sublight if you haven't already, and remember, whether exploring deep within the caves of Dagobah or standing in its smoldering crater, the force will be with you always.